Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again, and welcome back to AEL. Now, if you're new to this channel, please consider going down below and subscribing if you haven't done so already. Cheers. Well, I was searching on the internet for a MOSFET power amplifier just for something to do, and I came across this circuit, which I'll link the URL in the description if you want to look at it. It's of a 200 watt MOSFET audio power amplifier using lateral output MOSFETs. The confusing thing about this is they're using two different types of output MOSFETs in parallel, which is kind of interesting, but they really should be the same value. They're using a 2SK1057, which you could then substitute for the more common value, which is 2SK1058, and a 3SJ161, which doesn't exist, it should be a 2SJ161, and its next equivalent is 2SJ162. However, both these devices are now obsolete and you can't get them. Um, you can still get them from DigiKey, but they're at end of life and they're only available till around about mid to the end of next year, 2026. The replacements for these are the Exicon ECX 10 N20 and 10P20 respectively, but you can only get them from a website in the UK called ProFusion, and they're not available on DigiKey or Mouse, or I've already looked. However, they're at end of life now, and you can't get them, which is annoying, but they are now substituted on their website with the ECX 10N20-W6 and ECX 10P20. Dash dash w6 respectively and they're current so the only reason why i would say using those mosfets to replace these ones is because of the pinout of the device it goes gate source drain a lot of other mosfets that you could use here that are lateral well they have the pins in the different places so it wouldn't work in this circuit and you'd most likely blow them up so anyway other substitutions here for the transistors because i don't have them and don't really want to use them, is for the 2SB716 PMP, we can easily use an MJE350. For the differential VAS circuitry stage here, which is using 2SD756, that can be substituted for an MJE340, respectively. And these 2SA872 PMP input transistors for the long tail pair can be substituted for an MPSA92. However, I don't have any of those uh, MPSA 92s. I've got MPSA 42, which is the MPN. So when I'm actually building this up and testing it, I'll just substitute them out for BC56 just to get it going. I'm not really particularly worried about it and keep the supply voltage under 35 volt. Now, I don't see the need to run this at plus minus 63 volt because, well, that is quite a high power DC potential, but it will most definitely push 200 watts. I would probably keep this at plus minus 56 volts just to you know give headroom for the MOSFET so you're not stressing them so much. It's a self-biased circuit here uh, with these two 1N4148 signal diodes here and I do not know what the quiescent current is going to be without a bias adjustment servo in here. I could easily add one uh, but I can't tell you what its, its idle current is going to be until it's actually tested. Another weird thing here is the value of the resistor they're using in the Zobel network is fairly high at 4K7. And, I mean, it probably does work, but I, I've never seen that before. Minimum I've seen is 2.7 ohms, but not 4.7K. I don't know if that's a misprint or not but I'll try it with the 4k7 and in here in the differential input stage here they're using non-standard values of 5.1k as well uh, this is probably to keep the DC offset as low as possible now I don't have 5.1k the next available value is 5.6 so I may have to dick around either using a 4k7 which may be too low or going to a 5k6 respectively um, just for testing uh, it runs at a gain of 23 using these values here these two resistors 22k and 1k that's fine uh, but 
We've got a 47K here on the other side of the long tail pair, the input side. These two values should be the same to keep the input stage balanced so that it's not producing such a high DC offset. Although this value may have been chosen to lower the DC offset, I'm not sure. However, this 30 picofarad, which is a non-standard value as well, which is supposed to block RFI, it seems to be a fairly low value of capacitance to me. Yeah, I've never seen 30 picofarad on the input stage before. 470 picofarad, yes. Uh, the Miller compensation cap is a 15 picofarad across the VAS circuitry here. So other than that, I'm going to build it up on breadboard using BC556s as the input stage just for testing, and I'll order some MPSA 92s later down the track. Uh, with a 350 and 340 for the VAS stage and the constant current source for the VAS, respectively. And we'll see how well this circuit works, if at all. Well, there it is, all breadboarded there. Ignore that potentiometer here, that's not doing anything. I was just trying to test something else. Now, the circuit is powered up, however, it does not work. My power supply is set to roughly 31 plus minus volts, and we've got 30 volt DC on the output. Hmm. Now, I wasn't going to make this video, um, but I thought, well, I might as well share the fact that it's a fail. And yes, I'm using the correct type of MOSFETs on the output. They're wired correctly. Um, that's the power supply fan. This 12K resistor, which is in the constant current source for the bass stage, is getting considerably warm. Currently, our current drawer is only 13MA, which is... Well, well, that's perfectly fine. However, I did manage to find the original circuit that this one was stolen from. Uh, now, this circuit diagram is not really that clear, but when we compare it to the original one, which is there, we'll notice this 4148 diode going from the positive rail and the cathode going to the base of this 2SB716. Well, in the case of this one, there's actually a 100 ohm series resistor before the anode of the diode. The anode doesn't connect directly to the positive rail, so there's a resistor missing. But I have included that, made no difference. We'll also notice over here there's a string of diodes which is not on the original schematic. Two 4148s with some clamping diodes in between each. And it's unclear whether this needs to go to the output bus at this point here or whether it's just left open. But I've got those diodes in there with this point left open from the output bus's perspective. Makes no difference. You connect it to the output bus. Makes no difference. There's still a 30 volt DC offset on the output. Now the original input stage is BC556, funnily enough. And I've played with the value of this resistor which was 62K. I originally started at 68. Uh, didn't, didn't make any difference. Reduced it to 47, didn't make any difference. Currently it's now 56. And another point, over at the Zobel network there, it's a 0.22 microfarad capacitor with a 4.7 ohm resistor in series with it to ground. Not 4K7 as on the other schematic. So that's another error. I did think 4K7 was a bit ridiculously high. The VAS has a 30 picofarad capacitor across its collector and base. I'm currently using a 100 uh, picofarad. Um, uh, even with it installed and not installed, it makes no difference to the output result. And it is definitely 30 picofarad on the input for the uh, capacitor there that goes to ground. Not exactly sure why it's 30 picofarad, but okay. Now it shouldn't make a difference that I'm only using one set of output devices and not have them paralleled. It, it shouldn't for this low voltage make a difference. One set of transistors should be able to do the job. But because we've got a positive DC offset, it appears that the end channel MOSFET here is turning on and this one's not actually contributing or doing anything. And when I measured voltages at the gates here with respect to negative, I've got the full supply voltage of 60 volt at both gates. So that's a problem. I measured the voltage drop across this 12 volt, uh, 12 volt, 12k resistor, and that's showing 60 volts. So yeah, that's not right. 
So there's no voltage drop being experienced here. Well, it was either 60 volt or 30 volt, half a supply rail, which, whichever one it is, it doesn't really make any difference, but it's not actually experiencing a voltage drop if we're seeing one of the supply rails or the full voltage of the DC. So, there's also these extra diodes that were in the original schematic, but they're still in there, so that's fine. I don't know why it doesn't work, and I don't know why I can't make it work. I've gone through the wiring several times. I've spent the last three hours dicking around with it, getting nowhere. And, yeah, I'm at a loss as to why it's not working. Yeah, the original uses Buzz 900P and Buzz 905P, but... The schematic that I'm looking at, that I was building the circuit from, uses, well, a 2SK1082 and a 2SJ162. Well, actually, the last digit's one less, but it doesn't matter. That is the equivalent. And I've tested the MOSFETs. They do work. Um, there's no problem there. Um, there goes the fan again. So as to why this circuit doesn't function, I don't know. Um, is that 100 microfarad bulging? I'm going to kill the power on this now before something goes off with a bang. Yep, that capacitor is bulging. That's starting the vent. Um, which it shouldn't. There's only going to be 30 volt DC across it according to the feedback path. But, um, yeah, that capacitor is um, not happy. So, that's a problem. It's definitely starting to bulge. Uh, that may have been when I was having issues with the circuit earlier. It was drawing shitloads of current at one point and then it settled down. I might just change this capacitor and see if that makes a difference to our output offset. If not, I will end the video here because there's no point. Brand new capacitor. Positive goes towards the base of that transistor and to that 1K to ground, which is there. All right, turn it on. No, there's still 30 volts on the output. C 30 volt DC. Um, yeah, so, that's that's practically useless. So that was a complete and utter foul. I'm going to turn the power off or I'll destroy another capacitor, which I shouldn't do. I don't know why that other one is bulging. But I'm going to now measure the capacitance of that bulging capacitor and see what it reads. Hmm, 86.7 microfarad. Uh, yeah, okay, that's nowhere near right. I'll take this new one out that I put in and I'll measure it. So just connect that, connect that to there, connect that to there. 89.4 microfarad. Okay, if it's a 20% tolerance component, I suppose that's valid, unless that capacitor's been destroyed. So I'll take another new one and I will connect it up across the meter and see if we get a different result with a completely new one. That's never been used. Yeah. That's more like 90 microfarad. Yeah, okay. So, I can tell you that these capacitors are probably fine. Um, I need a proper part tester to actually measure the capacitance properly because I do not trust a multimeter. But yeah, this one started to bulge. So this one is, as they say in the industry, knackered. So, I wouldn't trust this in the circuit now that it started to bulge. I don't know why it started to bulge, but it did. So unfortunately, that's going to conclude this video. Um, I'm not going to go any further with this because it does not work. I might install this capacitor back in the circuit in case I decide to look at it again later. But, as I say, I've been through the wiring twice, three times, maybe four times. And it just does not work. And I have no idea as to why. So, unfortunately, that's going to do it for that. I mean, 
I might find a use for those MOSFETs yet, but for this particular experiment, complete fail. I'm the Astro30, and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to go down below, like, comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as always, this is the Astro30 saying see ya, thanks for watching, have a great day.